Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Patreon-exclusive episode of the Friday Nightmares podcast. On this episode, we are going to be running down our top five favorite monsters and movies. And with you, as always, Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. I'm fully vaxxed, waxed, and ready to be called daddy. And if you can please get me wet and feed me after midnight. And with me, as always. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> Like, I know you did your intro, but there's other people here. Uh, Heather Powell coming to you from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. And with all of our top five episodes, we always have a very special guest with us. And today is no exception. So the gentleman that we brought in with us today is one of the original podcasters that I started listening to. One of the first people that reached out to me and asked me to be on his show. We did the epic show Legend. Um, which was a lot of fun. Um, Also, I used to do fan mail for one of his other shows. I would listen and then send in feedback, which is, I think, how I got on the show in the first place. He has been on Fresh Cuts, No More Room in Hell, Summer Series, 22 Shots, um, Silo Dissection, Cinema Attacks, Exploding Heads. Uh, I believe he's also been on Cut to the Chase. He also does We're Here. Like, what does this man not do? Plus, Underwater Kaiju. Uh, I don't know if that's still going on, but he's been on it. Please say hello to Derek B. Derek, welcome. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Coming from the sweet sounds of Boston. (laughs) (laughs) Derek, we're so excited to have you here. Um, Scott and I have been such big fans of you and have always enjoyed working with you. Do you mind telling everyone a little bit about your history with horror movies or monster movies or both and then how you got into horror podcasting sure uh yeah of course uh horror movies in general just cousins vhs collections you know like you used to find like those old recording like vhs's that have you know it's like they did like the illegal thing where they rented the movies from blockbuster and had the two vhs's hooked up And recorded like a bunch of movies on them. And I seen some weird movies from that time period. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't even know that. Can I find this anywhere? And, you know, a few of them I have found like Scarecrows. uh, Oh, that movie's so fun. uh, Yeah. uh, Anguish with, uh, you know, uh, the chick from Poltergeist. Help me. This house is clean. (laughs) You know, in various other movies, you know, just growing up with cousins, you watching horror. Uh, one of the first horror movies that I remember, like, and this is like a perfect gateway movie, and it kind of is involved with like the subject at hand today, is the Monster Squad. Oh, I nice! To, oh, nice! I used to watch that back to back, rewind it, rewatch it again. Uh, that was just a fun one from my childhood that I always remember. It's a good gateway horror film too for younger generation, especially ones that are like, oh, Wolfman's got nards, you know. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i think you make a good point it's a great gateway film yeah and yeah. you know like that and then i got into like you know it was like yeah i like the monsters i like the terror of them i like all different types of monsters too you know like, even like the universal classics i'm a big fan of i've seen a lot of those maybe in my teens i would think like yeah like tens to like 15 maybe i was like okay the first one i probably remember seeing was abin costello meet frankenstein which is oh nice kind of like a horror comedy you know in that sense it was like oh the wolfman and dracula and frankenstein and you know i've been watching a lot of like i went on to like abin costello meet the mummy which is probably the best universal mummy movie yeah <laughs> i i remember those i loved abin costello movies I thought they were funny and they were just like for the time they were they had a little bit enough of like cool monsters in it to make it entertaining too. 
for sure and you know like yeah i was always into like the black and white like 50s b movies like them the beast from Twenty Thousand phantoms that you know those ones really sink your teeth in the first thing i remember is i actually read the story that the beast from Twenty Thousand phantoms was based off of the foghorn by ray bradbury and nice. uh yeah, I was like, Harry Housen and Ray Bradbury, sign me up, you know. And, you know, of course, that movie led to the inspiration to make probably uh, the movies that are, you know, the giant monster movies of, like, the Japanese. Like, Godzilla is based mm-hmm. off the Beast from 20,000 Phantoms. That was the inspiration for that movie in the original King Kong, you know, in that sense. And, you know, I love giant monster movies like godzilla i love godzilla films you you all know that oh yeah but, yeah but there, there's a lot of them i would not consider horror usually the set the late 70s ones where it's like all goofy and you hear like weird like music and then they introduce godzilla's time i'm like wow this series took a turn <laughs> yes it did those are the ones i actually grew up on when i was a kid oh, oh me too me too i'm not saying they're bad or anything but no. it's like but it's like I would like if if I was to bring one of those to the table, like yeah, Son of Godzilla. <laughs> that's definitely a that's a horror movie, you know. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, that's not. There's only a few that I consider actually personally horror, but you know they're all fun, and I like that. The thing with Godzilla is he's been thrown into so many different situations. It's kind of cool to see him. Like, uh, I know a lot of people actually hated these ones, but the anime trilogy that was on Netflix, I kind of like oh, yeah. the, the aspect of it where it's like a science fiction tale with Godzilla in the middle of it, you know? So I'm, I'm cool with like throwing him in different types of scenarios and storytelling. It makes it interesting and fresh. That's awesome. That's awesome. What about your horror podcasting? I listed off, I think all the shows you've been on, but why don't you tell everyone how you got into it and where they can find you right now? Uh, sure. Uh, pretty much my horror podcast and roots started because I followed the 22 shots of moods and horror. Uh, as you guys know, uh, the one of the hosts, Jeremy at the time, left for a while. And, you know, they had oh, yep. a, few, a few guest hosts here and there, like the fill in that void of getting a third person, you know, so because, you know, they have like the Hall of Fame type stuff that goes on. And uh, one day, out of luck, I actually had all the movies for the planned Ozploitation episode. So JP was like, why don't you come on and just ask me, just make sure it's okay with moves. And, you know, I was like, okay. So that was my first episode with them. And uh, then they couldn't get rid of me after because we did, because <laughs> we did uh when the stranger calls. Uh, then we went into like the Italian horror month, which is pretty fun. And uh that's where I got my catchphrase name 10 out of 10 Derek from because yep. you know from the I put demons in the hall of fame like I love that movie it's like top three horror movies for me and uh then you know the last show I did as a like kind of like a regular host on that was the hatch trilogy nice. uh, which I actually kind of you know everyone was asking me you're gonna be on episode 100 I'm like because I had to keep the secret because I knew that Jeremy was coming back like, so uh, maybe, I don't know. We'll find, we'll see, you know. Like, you know, but uh, then I started my own show, Cinema Attack, which had two incarnations. The first one only was short-lived with four episodes uh, with Brandon and Charlene. Well, Brandon probably ruined that, right? <laughs> we all know that's the truth. Honestly, I think it was the Shark Week episode that ruined that. See, we just blame Brandon for everything yeah. that goes wrong. It's all so, Brandon's fault. It's always Brandon's fault. Yeah, but yeah. who? It's Madden. Who are your two? Dub, dub, dub and Matt, who were nice. We were uh, on the YouTube channel Body Bags before that. Before uh, mm. I was like, you know, Matt's been doing podcasts and Dubby wanted to get into podcasting. So, uh, yeah, that, that was cool. You know, I was, I was like, okay. I'm back in, you know, and then, you know, I started study Lloyd like dissections mm-hmm. uh, with my friend Carly. Of, I want to say it last year, two years ago at this point, we started yeah. to have talks yeah. with that. Yeah. We had her on Cinema Attack and I enjoyed talking to her because she had like a fresh perspective of a lot of movies because she's a lot younger than us. You know, she has like that knowledge of like, we could be like blown sucking these movies off and she'd be like, fuck this movie. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I kind of like that aspect, you know, and, you know, I wanted that with like different types of movies and it was going good for a while. But then, you know, as even I do it, sometimes we, she was getting a little burnt out with all the podcasts mm-hmm. and like even like 
today I actually posted my first YouTube video after over a year and a half, maybe. So uh, I got burnt on that. And I, so I understand. So I'm like, that's okay with the ended, but I'm actually bringing that back as celluloid dissections, redux. I actually have a few episodes recorded already, but uh, they're not out yet. I'm just working on some uh, intro and outro kinks with that one but it'll be out soon enough with the first episode of nice. that it had some great discussions so far awesome. uh especially especially uh, uh me and Bo actually did blues the warmest color uh nice nice yeah Bo's great to work with yeah it was a great conversation and you know i can't wait to release that one and because i get really personal on that one Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, I'm but, excited to hear that then. But then, of course, we know the infamous Mike Merriman. <laughs> who, Where uh, we would be without Mike Merriman, really. Mike Merriman, <laughs> or as I call him, the Snorlax. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, I guessed it on a few episodes of Fresh Cuts, and, you know, he had evil episodes at the time. I guessed it on an episode of that. And uh, Mike was creating a new show. Uh, originally, I said no, <laughs> actually, ironically enough. And, you know, it was him, Venom, and Corey Graham at the time. I was like, I'll do guest spots. I don't care. So it ended up, like, being just me and them one episode and Corey came in and it was like the four of us for a while then Corey had to leave for personal reasons so it's just the three of us and it's me driving Mike mad talking about Marvel <laughs> movies and comic book movies because I know he fucking hates them <laughs> <laughs> I'm like you haven't watched them <laughs> so why are you judging a movie before you watch it? you know <laughs> at least watch it before you could have a fucking opinion Mike that's a valid statement Derek you're you know, 100% right I got to say, I do love the three personalities. Yours, Venoms, and Mike's really do complement each other on No they More do. How. It does. It does, especially when it comes to when you watch a movie like How Sue and you're like, I don't know how to talk about this movie. It's so weird. Can I smoke a blow bone right now? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, uh, I know you kind of need to for that movie. <laughs> yeah. You had Scott and I on Cinema Attacks, and we had a great time with your co-hosts that was a lot of fun i think we covered three movies yeah we did uh right autopsy of jane doe yep oculus and under the shadow yeah which which yeah. was a great discussion because we were all in different fucking places on that one which, yeah we had a really good time yeah that, that was a great review and show and we definitely will have you guys back when you guys are a little bit more into it i know you guys are all busy with your other shit too yeah, Scott keeps creating shows. <laughs> like we have the video game shows. show <laughs> that he hasn't even like rescheduled. We'll have to have you on that because I'm pretty sure you play video games, Derek. Uh, here and there. Okay. Uh, I don't actually own any consoles besides like a, uh, a Switch. I believe that's the fuck they call them. Now. Yeah, that's <laughs> Switch. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing I'm. Looking. I'll talk about Super Smash Brothers. With hey, you, so you can know. definitely talk about Super Smash Brothers. We are open to anything, but Scott. Scott's on a break right now. He's when he gets around to booking a date, we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> probably going to be after uh, after my visit to Heather because just got a lot going on preparing for that. Oh, well, he's got to prepare. He's got to save his liver, try to take some multivitamins. <laughs> it's all those chugging videos finally cut up. With him. Dude, oh, just, yeah. It's going to get worse when he comes here. Um, but <clears throat> thank you so much, Derek, for for being here again and giving us an overview. We'll, we'll do some more shout outs at the end. Uh, Because we definitely want people to check you out on all the different podcasts that you're on because you always bring the knowledge. Sure. Yeah, I would say I'm glad that you're on here, especially for uh, this is a very specific uh, you episode here, because I know you are a big fan of the monsters as well as I am. So it's like we wanted to work with you again on our like and I have you on one of our shows. And uh, yeah, what better topic? (laughs) Yeah, but, you know, stuff Scott doesn't know anything. So we're. We just make shit up as we go. So um, how we're going to do this is we're going to do our shout outs for those of you who listen to our top five. There may be spoilers that we give about some of these movies like it is what it is. Uh, We have no loose or we'd have no hard and fast rules or very loosey goosey. If you think it's a monster movie and you think it's horror, we don't give a fuck. We allow your opinion to be heard. Um, Scott, do you want to lead us off with your shout outs and then we'll go to Derek and then to me? Yeah. So, uh, yep. I, like always, I have five different, uh, honorable mentions. I wanted to give a shout out. Five. To. Yep. Just kidding. <laughs> Damn right. Um, so yeah, the first one, I, what is a monster movie? If I cannot talk about, uh, the thing from 1982, mm-hmm. 
Uh, the only reason this is not in my top five is just because I could not pick one version of the thing to choose out of this movie. Like, there's just so many variations of what this creature looks like. So I just kind of said, I'm just going to throw this as my honorable mention because the monster, the monsters in this are all unique and disturbing and still to this day, some of the best practical effects I've ever seen in my life. The dog one always creeps me out the most. What about you, Derek? Uh, yeah, the dog one's pretty good, and I also like Mega Blair at the end. Mm, yes. Yeah. And the head spider. I love the head spider. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, in this similar vein, I uh, uh, Derek mentioned him a bit earlier, but uh, I chose Godzilla for the honorable mentions just because there is not one version of Godzilla I could sit here and pick because he's changed throughout the Many, 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 many years of films that he's been in. So Godzilla was another honorable mention because, yeah, I mean, he's the true king of kaiju. I freaking love the love them. Grew up watching them as a kid. So I had to bring it up. Um, this one's going to be the controversial pick, but it is Christine. I picked Christine because in a way it is a monster just because it is a vehicle that is like supernaturally possessed. But it is also thinks on its own, has its own personality. And this one I picked mainly because of the uh, re- uh, mainly because of the connection I have with this film, and that is because my brother, who passed away over five years ago, this was his all-time favorite movie. So I be reminisced not to uh, bring this film up. I love Christine, and I watch it every year around his birthday. So I had had to bring it up. And I googled it, and it's considered a monster move, monster for monster. Yeah, film. when you told me that, that's why I was like, "Yep, it's going on my honorable mentions list for sure." Well, she is bad to the bone. Damn Absolutely, right she is. and she is my dream car. If I ever could afford to get a uh, fifty-seven Plymouth, oh, I would so get one. When you're living your best life, Scotty, one day. Exactly, and then. The other one I wanted to bring up is Graboids from Tremors, because I just love the concept of these giant underground worms that, uh, and I'm talking grab the Graboids themselves from Tremors 1, none of the weird mutated variations that come out throughout the franchise. No ass blasters. Yeah, no ass blasters. (laughs) Uh, But no, I just love the concept of these just giant worms that pretty much attack, by uh, sense and attack people by their vibrations in the ground, which makes it so it's almost impossible to escape them. And it just, and I love the design of them with their multiple mouths and tongues and just they're creepy ass creatures. And then I also wanted to talk about Predator because he is the ultimate hunter as a, and just super high tech alien life form. But man is the costuming design for this so freaking incredible and creepy. It scared the living hell out of me when I was a kid. And I'm so glad they didn't go with that weird red lobster looking thing that I think what was a Jean-Claude Van Damme was supposed to be in the suit for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, that was an awful design. So I'm glad they didn't go with that. <laughs> but yeah, those are my honorable mentions. So we will pass it over to Derek. Yeah, this might uh, be interesting because, well, first one I chose was any of the creatures from Frankenstein's army. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. I couldn't just pick one because they're all unique in their own way. Uh, that's just a fun popcorn found footage movie that I like. doesn't even make sense why it's found footage, but I don't care. <laughs> I, just enjoy I still it. need to see that movie. Yeah, because once you see like a, a propeller with legs, you're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm sold already. <laughs> uh, this might be hilarious, but uh, I chose the monster from the host, which if you didn't know this guy, his name is Steve Buscemi. Really? We did not know that. Yeah, the Bong Joo Ho actually named it Steve Buscemi. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. Amazing. <laughs> it's a good monster, too. It's creepy. Yeah. Uh, I chose, uh, this might actually be a spoiler for the movie, Louise from Spring. Oh, yes. I love Spring. I haven't seen Spring. Oh, I... It- I'm not sure if that'll be a movie you would like nearly as much as I do, because it's definitely one of those relationship based horror films. Mm, OK, but I, I fucking love it. Nice. Very yeah. Lovecraftian. Yeah. Uh, and I chose the Xenomorph from Alien. Nice. nice. Awesome. Awesome list, Derek. All right. So um, my list is not nearly as long for shout outs. Um, I chose the entity from It Follows. Uh, as a shout out because it does take different shapes and forms you think it's a ghost but it's not a ghost because it comes in different either it's an old man or it's an old woman and the speed at which it moves is just so slow and determined Um, I always found that really creepy and I thought that movie well it's one of my favorite all-time horror movies because I just think the concept is brilliant 
Um, and I think the execution is really one, well done too, but I've always appreciated that monster. And the other one I want to mention is Rat People from The Descent. Oh, um, nice. Because I always, I thought if I was in that situation and I came across uh, people or monsters that looked like that, I'd be poo-pooing my pants <laughs> because I'd be yeah. so scared, right? And even the scene where she's hiding in the, I think it's like mud and feces or whatever it is, the water. And she goes under and they can, they sense by hearing, right? That's what it is. They have incredible hearing and she's trying to hide. I always found that scene so suspenseful as they're looking for her. And I'd be terrified if things that looked like that were looking for me. So that's why I had to give a shout out to the rat people. That's yeah. awesome. Good pick right there. Yeah. And then the rest, I like Scott had mentioned some of the top ones. So I don't think there's anything really else to add. Um, and then there's only one I'll throw out at the end if no one mentions it as a shout out, but I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of basic, so I don't want to use it yet. So I guess we'll start with Scotty's number five. All right. So my number five, I seen this movie when I was a kid. It is hokey. It is cheesy. I fucking love it to this day. And that is, uh, the monster from terror vision. Oh, Basically, what is terror vision? I may actually put that song at the end of this since we can play licensed music on our Patreon show. <laughs> oh, right, right. Um, but yeah, the reason uh, I love the idea that this is just an alien life form that was created for basically being it was a living garbage disposal for these aliens. And the concept of it just all of a sudden it's because it's based in the 80s. So it's got these like these people get this huge satellite and are all blown away by how many channels they can get on their TV. And the satellite somehow picks up the monster and teleports into their TV, which he can use to change channels and then hop out of the movie. I just love the design of it. It's just this big, slimy, ball shaped thing with giant googly eyes rolling all over the place and its mouth is just constantly chopping and has <laughs> weird ass tentacles with eyeballs that he can apparently turn in he can uh make the tentacles look like other people like at least their heads and they're all slimy looking but they like have their voices and everything it's just a really well designed like low budget style monster and uh for you know most monster films they usually like hide their creature in the dark until like the big reveal at the end and this no it's john carl buchler so they're just like yep we're putting this full front you see the monster from the beginning throughout the whole thing and it looks amazing just love this creature yeah it's, awesome. a, great, it's a great movie i have fun with that one a lot yeah it is so corny and i freaking love it <laughs> especially when you watch re- on rewatch when you just see like all these weird sex paintings and yes. shit on the wall it's because the parents are like the kids parents are huge swingers yeah (laughs) sounds like a good time right right (laughs) um but uh derek what is your number five my number five uh uh for spoilers for the how we're recording this i actually my video is not working but i'm actually wearing a shirt for uh, this guy right here and that is pumpkin head Ooh, nice uh yeah this is a movie i actually recently talked about on my own show cinema attack uh I just love how straightforward this is. It's just a revenge tale. A breezy 88 minutes long. It doesn't overstay its welcome. And the look of the creature is so alien to itself. Created by Stan Winston. It's a crew of people, especially during like uh, that time period. And I just love the atmosphere of this movie and how this creature just fucks with people. It just fucks with them. Like that one lady, he's just crawling a crucifix on her head and shit uh it's great i love the look of the creature i love my favorite shot of the monster of course is the scene where uh lance hendrickson's character gets stabbed with a rake and you can see like it's transforming into ed harley yes slowly where you see lance hendrickson's face actually on the monster and it's so creepy and unsettling that i dig it it's the best the monsters looked in my opinion uh, because you know, some of the I actually like the sci fi channel sequels, but uh, you know, that's when they cheapen up on the suit <laughs> a lot. 
Yeah, I haven't bothered with any of the sequels yet, but I've been wanting to at least check them out at some point. Right, right. Well, uh, it's so funny because my number five was Pumpkinhead as well. Ah, nice. Uh, but I did bring it back up because you did such a great job of talking about Pumpkinhead, but I chose him this for the same reason you did, Derek. I think he's a badass demon that comes to fuck shit up. And I think the costume design, especially for 1988, was just so detailed and amazing. Like, I feel like the 80s, I actually pulled a lot of stuff from the 80s because I really do feel like they used practical effects extremely well. They didn't have CGI, right? So they were kind of resorting back to what they could use. So my my replacement was the Leprechaun. Oh, nice. From the Leprechaun 1993 and 2018. Nice. Um, both Leprechauns I greatly enjoyed. And I found the 2018 movie a great sequel to the original. And I found that it kept the sense of humor, the, um, the, the kind of like the creepiness of it and like how he just looks gross. Like he just looks like he has warts and grossness all over his body. He's what you would think a scary, terrifying, terrifying leprechaun would look like. And the Irish accent is just spot on. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome monster. And if, you know, pumping heads already been said, so I'll acknowledge leprechaun is my number five. Nice. nice. Um, yeah, well, speaking of pumpkin head, my number four was pumpkin head. <laughs> <laughs> we all love pumpkin head, clearly. Yeah. Um, so I will switch it up as well. And uh one that was in this place until I kind of switched around my list was the uh the spiders from the mist. Oh nice. I just love like the I can't remember who did the effects for this one. KB, but... I think. Okay, KB did. Okay. But uh, I love just the design of these spiders because they look they're very 70s B movie style with the way the monsters are done in this film. And I love that Frank Darabont went with that, as want, wanting that to be the design of the creatures, because that's kind of how it seemed like in the book as well. Um, but I love the look of them because they are like almost have like a human skull face to them. And they're just so fucking creepy. And like, you don't want to have to deal with giant spiders as it is, but then giant spiders that spit like an acidic venom that just, or an acidic uh, webbing. Oh, that's even worse. But yeah, that is going to be my number four. Cause yeah, pumpkin head is amazing. Freaking love it. But yeah, I wanted to bring at least something different. So there we go. <laughs> uh, Derek, what is your number four? Uh, my number four is actually a film. This is actually one of the few films where I actually tear it up to. And it is the monster from the monster. I think I've seen. Oh, this that is such a good freaking pick! I love that movie. Yeah, it's a uh, it's from the same guy who did The Strangers, uh, Brian Bertino. Uh, great performances by Zoe Kazan and the little girl who plays her daughter in the film. Uh, it's a very interesting movie because you know it talks about like the relationship with the mom and the daughter and the mom when we first meet her she's not a very likable person at all no no especially in some of the flashback scenes we see yeah i'm like i want this bitch to die but then what this movie interpretates this they face this fucking monster in the middle of the road i like that it all takes place really in this like one setting of their car and then another car later and then you know it's them trying to survive against this creature and the thing I like about the monster, it's a practical effect. It's super, they play with it with the light and it actually works for this movie's ability with the light of the creature because it's all black and you can see it in shadows really until you get a good look at it like later on in like the sequence that involves the ambulance. But uh, yeah, I actually liked the story of it and it did make me tear up at the end, especially mm. something that happened within the film which I don't want to really spoil if you haven't seen the movie, but let's just say it made me like, oh, that's a good character trait that that happened in the movie. Yeah, uh, like, because this is one that I wanted to do, like, uh, if we ever do the theme episode on addiction, I want to do this film, because this film like covers addiction very well, and it's just, yeah, Monster is just incredible in it. Well, I think you both have really praised it. I'm definitely going to have to check it out. Yeah, yeah. I definitely recommend it. I think you would like it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, so my number four, thankfully, it has not been mentioned, uh, but it's Audrey 2 from Little Shop of Horrors. I had a feeling that would be on your um, list. Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> Feed me, Seymour. Feed me. So my history with this is I saw Little Shop of Horrors as a play. So I um, I was in theater school at one time, and I have been in some, you know, obviously very low-level productions in my local area. And 
I went and saw Little Shop of Horrors and I thought the story was just amazing. I the special effects they did on the stage was with Audrey was amazing at the time to me as as a child. And just the thought of this little Venus fight trap becoming huge and craving human blood and manipulating everybody in their in their path in its path in order to get what it wants. And I just thought it was super clever. And it was a fun musical as well. And I still like little shop, little shop, shop horse. Horse. Like I all the songs do, do, from it. Do, do. Like it's such a happy, upbeat musical that has a really sad ending. Like it's a really depressing ending. So it's really funny that some of the songs are just so happy. But anyway, uh, Audrey too from Little Shop of Horrors is my number four. I got to give a shout out uh, to the guy who actually vo- voiced uh, Audrey too. It's the lead singer of the Four Tops. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Nice. Amazing. Amazing performance. All right. So uh, my number three, this one is uh, very like I'm, I would I would be shocked if it's not on someone's list, but uh It is Frankenstein's monster from the 1931 film Frankenstein, because I mean, this is one of the all time great monsters in monster cinema. Like even for this day, the makeup effects look absolutely incredible. Boris Karloff, just amazing as the monster himself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just love this because he's just a huge beast that is very sympathetic because all he will he doesn't know what's going on he just got created and then he's treated as the villain he's like and... how i felt this morning after last night <laughs> yeah you don't know what's going on when you woke up you're just like oh. <laughs> i don't know what's going on either it was great <laughs> why is this hunchback beating me <laughs> exactly what was happening <laughs> but, i mean what all could be said this movie like the monster itself is absolutely incredible the effects are amazing on him and yeah, one of the greatest classic horror films of all time. Uh, what can you say? Frankenstein's the man, right? Exactly. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, what is your number three, Derek? Well, this is going to be an interesting one because I kind of wanted to go with a movie that uh, is kind of like a hidden gem for me. And that is the Splinter Organisms from the movie Splinter. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Uh, if I had to actually pick a form of these creatures, it would be... You know, when they take that half of one body and join to another body. Yes. And it's like this crazy spider human thing. But uh, I just like the simplicity of these little black splinters that are everywhere. And if one of them gets to you, it will fuck your day up. As we see with uh, the Shea Wiggum character in the movie where he gets one in his hand and it's slowly affecting his whole body. It's going up. And they actually, if you haven't seen it, uh, spoiler, slight spoiler listeners they had to chop his arm off at a certain point so he could before it overtakes him and i like that aspect of the movie and it's it's kind of like where i see the thing as an organism this is the same way this thing is kind of like uh it's actually very relatable to the day too especially with like the pandemic going on Mm -hmm. where this little fucking organism could fuck up everyone's lives if it gets out Great comparison, like, Derek. Yeah, comparison. I like, and I love that it's contained. It's contained all in like this little gas station. It's a good little cool flick that I think a lot of people would appreciate during this time period. Yeah, it's a because I actually watched that last year for the first time, and yeah, that movie was awesome, and the monster effects were freaking sweet. Yeah. Wow. Uh, God, good choices. Good choices. So mine is a group as well because I couldn't just choose one, but the Cenobites from hellraiser nice um almost on my list almost on my list fucking creepy like especially the one with the teeth that's like (laughs) (laughs) like and imagine like you're just fucking chilling and you finish some fucking puzzle and those motherfuckers show up like pinhead (laughs) in itself is creepy like don't get me wrong i think the needles and everything but then when you see his like posse you're like how is he like normal-ish kind of looking and the rest of them look Fucked. and the shit they say like we have such sights to show you you'll never know what pain like you it's tear so, your like, soul apart like it's fucked like it's yeah. and the scene where they tear um the uncle apart in that like christy sees him get and he's like and jesus wept yeah, and like oh, the shreds. The shreds? <laughs> oh my god but yeah so the cenobites no matter where they are no matter who they are are motherfucking freaky so they get number three for me. I never want to run into any of them. Yeah, yeah especially like in even in part two when that daughter becomes one. No. Yes. Oh, God, yes. And the, the greatest line ever, to think I resisted. 
<laughs> before he gets that <laughs> giant worm on the top of his head that makes him fly and then he has like little scalpels coming out of his hand and shit i'm like what the fuck right it's crazy crazy fucking shit but awesome costume design awesome makeup say yeah. i tell razor bring it in yep that was another reason why i uh it is not on my list just because i could not just pick one yeah like, pinhead is like always gonna be iconic and my favorite but i mean there's butterball and then the, i forget the woman's name but i think i think she's just female cinnabite yes yeah i think you're right but yeah and they're just all super freaking creepy uh so what are we number two already um i am all right so my number two uh it got brought up on uh derek's honorable mention list but that is the xenomorph from the original alien um, I was debating between this one or the Alien Queen and Aliens, but I just love the slender phallic symbolism of this freaking monster. It is so horrific. Uh, the design, like the special effects, you know, it's definitely H.R. Uh, Geiger inspired. And uh, man, I love that it's like this bio uh, biomechanical beast. And just like the weird, sleek, just kind of blackish, gross design with its little snapping jaw that comes out of its mouth. And I mean, it's already a terrifying monster. And then to add the fact that when it gets hurt, it spray, it uh, bleeds acid. It's like, that's, that's just an extra defense mechanism that just makes this thing even more horrifying. And it can hide in the tightest spaces and blends in with everything on the Nostradamus ship. And just, it's just fucking creepy to this day like it's still one of my all one of my all-time favorite monsters that i've grown up loving since i was a kid i even had alien toys and everything like that when i was like 12 years old <laughs> nice he, by 12 years old he means last week yes That's well, mentally actually, mentally yeah. i'm still 10 so it's yes <laughs> hell yeah uh derek what is your number two well i'm staring at a funko pop of this uh guy right now uh the gill man from creature from the black lagoon Nice. nice nice i had to go with my favorite of the universe monsters I, it was hard to go with one but and i i actually think the gill man hasn't looked as terrifying as he did in the original movie especially uh with the blackness of his eyes underwater it's so creepy that iconic scene where i i believe it's julie adams who is the actress who's actually that's when i figured out i loved burnett's was that movie too. <laughs> nice. uh, because she's fucking gorgeous in that film. Uh, yeah, I loved her. I was very sad when I heard about her passing recently because that was a recent childhood memory. But uh, yeah, that iconic scene where he's swimming underneath her and, you know, he's like just pecking at her feet. It's like, that's why you I never go swimming in like a lagoon because, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you never know what the fuck's in there, you know, in that sense. Very true. And yeah, the creepiness of the Gill Man He's, he's, he's just a creature living in his environment. And, you know, it's just, this is a vibe being like fucked with, you know, he's just mm-hmm. acting as an animal. That's what he is. Yep. Which yep. A lot of people, you know, he looked at him as a monster, but, you know, even in like the sequel, like they take him out of his environment and put him into a cage. You know, he's just reacting to the situation. Right. I would too. And who's the real monster, right? Exactly. Is it him? Or is it humans? Exactly. And, you right. know, and, and then they did like uh, the third one where, you know, they actually take his gills out and make him more human like, which is mm. an interesting aspect of that movie. It was a good it's a good trilogy of films where you follow this creature through its journey. And I like that aspect of they're all connected, which I didn't actually know they were connected when I was younger. But I'm like, oh, these actually have continuity. That's kind of cool. So, yeah, but the original, the, the best look, especially in the underwater shots, because even in part two, he has those weird bug, ball, bulby eyes in part mm-hmm. two, where it's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And, you see, <laughs> and you can actually see the fucking water sticking out of them. Yeah. It, it looks kind of cheesy, on, especially in HD transfers. So, yeah, the original look of the creature in part one, I have to put it as my number two. Yeah, that I agree. A great choice. Absolutely. And, like, I think you made a good point on how it made people uncomfortable about swimming in the clouded water but even more the deeper meaning of that movie yeah. you know and as those movies go on and what they're trying to say about society right like it's it's interesting that the monsters that are presented is there's you know and i know this is very deep here but there's way worse monsters in our world that are not 
gill men <laughs> right? right like a gill man would be like the least of our concerns if it existed um and it's just really really fascinating it's like how aliens we always assume that they're going to come and take our shitty planet that we've completely like polluted the shit out of um you know it's just it's fascinating but yeah and i think also the special effects at that time when the when the first movie came out was incredible yeah and the makeup right sure. um so for me uh my second is the werewolf from an American werewolf in London. Nice. Um, oh, yeah. Mean poodle. Yes. Mean poodle. I love, I love the transformation of this werewolf. I think for 1981, the special effects, the, I believe it's a machine. Like it's obviously an effect, right? Like it's not a costume. Yeah. So it's incredible. Like the, the face and the expectation of it. And amazing i know that you don't see the werewolf doing tons of stuff like you do see it in like the, the street of london and stuff like that and you get that kind of standoff at the end between him and the woman that he's fallen in love with in a total of 72 hours but <laughs> i <laughs> like i love you i just met you three days ago um but i just i just love for that time and the effects of it and i want to give a small little shout out to his best friend who slowly decays even though he's not a yes. monster the slow decay of him as he shows up throughout the entire film is awesome too when it comes to special effects. I think yeah. American Werewolf in London is one of the better werewolf movies out there. Um, there's been some great ones recently, don't get me wrong, but I just love that transformation. Yeah, that trans- transformation scene will it is and will continue to be one of the best werewolf transformation scenes ever, in my opinion. Yeah, I so. agree completely. Like, uh, first time I ever seen that was like when I was six. I'm like, why is this dude naked? And what the fuck's happened to him? And then his arm just fucking stretches out. I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> I felt that. I felt like arthritis <laughs> at that time. Like, ah, <laughs> you know. And then his jaws, you know. And you know, the, I like that. There's comedy in the movie, even though the com the movie's actually very fucking dark, especially with its yeah. comedy. But you know, there's some lightheartedness, like a naked American man stole my balloons. Yes, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a fun movie. One of my favorite John Landis's movies for sure. Yeah, and the special effects by Rick Baker. Mwah. Right? You can't go wrong. All right. Yeah. So y'all knew this was coming. My number one. Um, so of course. Uh... <laughs> Um, you know, Gremlins is my all time favorite movie of Gremlins one and two. The heart I could have literally made just a top five of top five list of all the different Gremlins, especially when it comes to part two's Gremlins. So this took me a long, hard time to think about which one I was going to put in this list. And speaking of Rick Baker, I chose one from part two because he did the special effects in that. And that, uh, because in part two, there's just like the regular gremlins, and then there's the mutated versions of those same gremlins later on in the film. So there was different variations I had to think about. So for my number one, I went with Gremlins 2, and I chose Mohawk and his spider form. Because, dear God, that thing is absolutely horrifying, and to this day still stands up as one of the coolest looking freaking monsters in the that I have ever seen with the special effects. The design <laughs> of the just the design and the animatronics used to create this thing is absolutely incredible. And for such an amazing, scary monster in such a goofball comedy of a film. Um, it it's just kind of fits with that film, but at the same time, I am just very sad that you only get like maybe two minutes of him as his full spider form before Gizmo comes out and kicks his ass as little Rambo Gizmo. Uh, yeah, uh, I actually have a funny story about Gremlins too. Ooh, I actually saw you didn't see this in theaters. So did I. And I forget what time. Ninety one, I think. Right. Uh, nineteen ninety. Ninety. So I was four or five at the time. And, you know, once uh, he started to multiply and do like, you know, the other gremlins, little Mogwai come out. Mohawk Mogwai just pops out of nowhere, scared the fucking shit out of me. And I was just (laughs) covered for the rest of the movie. I didn't even watch Gremlins 2 for the longest time because I was just terrified of his fucking Mogwai form. Yeah, his Mogwai form was even like, (laughs) they made him look so freaking evil. (laughs) (laughs) Like, like. 
I didn't watch that. I had nightmares of gremlins for years after that because I just nightmares of gremlins tearing me apart uh, just because of that one scene of his just a mogwai form of that creature. Uh, but then you know, over time, I'm like, ah, it's not too bad, you know, getting older. Uh, five years old scarred me for life, but yeah, I could see that talking about it scarred me for life <laughs> at 38. How often we have to bring up gremlins, but I'm not surprised, Scott, and I'm glad no. you got to put them on your list. Yeah, I, I almost went with the vegetable gremlin just because I love the design of him, <laughs> I just love the design of the vegetables on him, and I. All right, NECA, if anybody working from NECA hears this, you guys are doing an amazing job bringing me these awesome Gremlins toys. Oh, for sure. They listen. Yes. (laughs) Make a vegetable Gremlin figure. That is all I freaking ask. (laughs) You're such a nerd. You're such a nerd. I am. Oh, my God. You're keeping the Gremlins franchise alive and well. Single-handedly. Single-handedly. So, Derek, what is your number one? My number one is might not be what everyone's thinking it's going to be. Ooh, I have picked the Yotan from David Bruckner's The Ritual. Really? Oh, wow. I did not. I didn't even think about that one. Holy shit! The most unique looking monster I ever seen in a film ever. It actually creeped me the fuck out. Yeah, because that's the uh, Netflix one, right? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a good one, Derek. That's a That's really, really good, one. good. I just love the look of the creature so much. And this, it's it's one of the most unique designs because this creature is actually, <laughs> I was actually cracking up because I was watching Thor actually recently. And, you know, he's the bastard son of Loki, this monster. <laughs> so I'm like, Tom Hiddleston gave birth to that. Because <laughs> that's all I was thinking about at the time. But <laughs> I just love the look of it. I love how. Actually, on rewatch, you can see it in the background, and it's just creepy of certain scenes. Yeah, that that monster like is incredible because it's it's almost like a demonic centaur. Yeah, and it's just creepy. It has like these little human arms, and the end of it that picks people up. It's like what the fuck? Yeah, it's freaking terrifying. Yeah, I, I just I, that movie's just great. It's a great folk horror movie, and uh, I'm very excited for the rest of Bruckner's career because I remember. Uh, actually, one of my honorable mentions was a short for VHS, uh, Amateur Night, where he did the succubus. Oh, yes, the yeah. I like you, yeah, like you. <laughs> yeah, you know, and uh, he just he was actually supposed to direct a Friday the 13th sequel at one point, which that fell through. And oh, this, I would have loved to see that, yeah. And this is if you watch this with like the original Blair Witch, the ritual, and the Blair, very inspired by the Blair Witch, this movie, especially with like how they're getting lost and just the set in general. and uh, it's a good double feature where Midsummer too never goes to Sweden, <laughs> you <know>? right? <laughs> you know, it's good stuff. Good stuff, man. That is an excellent choice because yeah, I wouldn't just completely slip my mind. Good one. Yeah, we've called in a lot of different ones actually, which is great. Um, my number one is Bundle Fly or Brendel Fly from The Fly. Nice. Um, I had a feeling someone was going to bring it up, so I left it off my list. Yeah, yeah. he's fucking creepy as hell, and and the way that Jeff. Like when he's in that in between stage where he can still kind of talk, um, but he's jumping on the walls and shit. Like, this is how I eat with the donut. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's the slow decline. Like, they drag out that decline of him. And I'm always, you know, the point where this is a spoiler where she has like the gun and I'm like, shoot him, bitch. What are you waiting for? Like, what are you waiting for? Put this dude out of his fucking misery. Like, what are you doing? Um, I, I just love that film. I think how they show him slowly becoming a monster and how it changes him as a person is incredible. And then her dreams about having a baby fly, you know, like it's just the whole movie is so tied into his slow descent and the makeup and his interactions and the lines and how he delivers them awesome i don't think jeff goldblum is the best actor out there i'll never say he is but i think for this role he did what he needed to do to make that monster believable and creepy and i still can't you know when people arm wrestle and he snaps Mm. that 
that scene still haunts me. Yeah. The thought of your wrist just snapping like that. Oh my God. So yeah, he got number one on my list for top monsters. And, and we can't, we can't forget the whole like, Oh, I lost a piece of my body. Let me put it in a jar in the medicine cabinet. And you see like this the museum, of Rundle. There and- <laughs> the museum of Rundle's wonders, you know? Oh. Right. Oh man. Oh. Such a good film. Such a good yeah. film. Yeah. The thing with that movie, which I actually tell people when they first watch it, it's kind of like, it's uh actually David Cronenberg when he was making this movie actually lost his mom to cancer. Oh, oh wow! And he actually that's how uh, he wanted to portray the transformation as if somebody you love is getting sick, and you know how you know if you go for like chemotherapy and shit like that, how that transforms the people, yeah. and that's what he wanted to do with like the way Brundle acts in the film. Well, that makes a lot of sense because he totally did do that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, wow, and, that's a great comparison. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and uh, my favorite scene of that movie is actually uh, when he's talking about insect politics, and you know yeah. that, that that's such a great scene of Goldblum acting. And I'm a huge Goldblum fan, but I the fly is definitely his best performance in my opinion. Yep, agreed. Yeah. yeah. Though I did enjoy him in Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah, yes. like there. <laughs> Jeff, it's funny. Jeff Goldblum just basically became uh, the caricature of Jeff Goldblum moving yes. forward. Like everyone knows him as his weird, quirky personality now. So he just fucking rolls with it. And hey, good for him because I hey, am all about it. It works, right? <laughs> yeah, it works. So those are our top five monster movies. Um, it was such an awesome experience because we all had different stuff. Only one real slim, similar one yeah. that Pumpkin made all head. of pumpkin <laughs> head. Head. Um, And then the rest were all really different. So hopefully we've given you some monster movies to check out. Um, as everyone who's listening to this is aware, this is a Legion Patreon special. We do drop it first on our Legion Patreon page and then we release it to the regular Friday Nightmare feed a couple weeks afterwards. So if you did didn't want to wait for this then i suggest that you become a legion patreon member there's lots of special shows that are on there bo does ouija experiment shows <laughs> uh there's been list of legends i know uh a psyops cinema psyops. Psyops, cinema psyops does um some special episodes as well so we encourage you if you haven't joined legion, legion patreon yet what are you waiting for what are um, you waiting for <laughs> what are you waiting for Two bucks, two bucks a month. Two bucks, it's not two bad. Bucks. And you get all that. You yeah. get all that. You get all the shows. Yeah, and We're I just think every show. Gang gang. And I think every show on Legion is at least going to do one thing a year, maybe more. Because, like, yep, yeah. Cinema Psyops. What they are doing is, it is the same episode that we hear on their regular feed, except they are using Court's able to use the licensed music that he started off with when he created the show. And the man is a madman when it comes to like spending the time finding music that fits the theme for each movie. So like he, this was his wheelhouse when he was able to do that. So he's able to bring that back. So yeah, you get the original music instead of the, what do they call that? The uh, uh, public domain music that he's forced to use on the main feed. And I think Gary Hill has been starting to do some things on there as well. Uh, yeah. Yep. So we got a lot of a uh, lot of great content on there now, and it's we're just adding more and more as as it goes. It seems absolutely. And also, you can hit subscribe on the Legion homepage. Please subscribe to all of our shows. Uh, subscribe on any podcast service of choice, whether that be iTunes or Podcast Addict or Spotify, whatever you use, you'll be able to find us. Now, Derek, do you want to give a shout out to your shows so people know where to find you again? I know we talked about it earlier, but just so people can locate you. Yeah, sure. Uh, My main show, Cinema Attack, can be found on Anchor. Uh, We actually just moved. We're we're independent now. We're on Anchor. Uh, We have a few episodes out there, and soon Celluloid Dissections Redux will be on the same feed. So just go to anchor.fm and search for Cinema Attack, and you can find us there. Also, No More Room in Hell is on the Dark Discussions Network. Just search for Dark Discussions or No More Room in Hell, and you'll be able to find it on any podcatchers. They are here podcast, which I do with the Miss Lacey Lou. Uh, You can find that on the Cut to the Chase feed, which is also on Anchor, I believe. So look for that. And uh, Underwater Kaiju, I think, is still kind of on a hiatus. I'm not really too sure. I don't want to put any... But you can find the old episodes on Legion Podcast, as always. 
And if you are subscribed to the Legion Patreon, me and Mr. Gary Hill actually do a show that's actually a Patreon exclusive called Blood from the Core. Oh, that's what it was. Yes. Yeah. Where we look at New York based thrillers slash horror movies. We have a few episodes out on uh, the first one we did was The Sentinel and we did Q nice. the Serpent, uh, which is another honorable mention for me. Check out Q if you haven't seen it. Cool monster movie. And we also recently did one that we released live also where we went to New Jersey and talked about Alice Sweet Alice. So yeah, you can find it anywhere, but that's about it for me. A few guest spots here and there, but yeah, I'm a whore. Whatever. <laughs> we all are. Love it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, because I didn't get a chance to say much earlier, but uh, I, yeah, thank you very much, Derek, for joining us because I actually, because uh, once again, like how Heather said, you were very welcoming to me as well in the horror community, the podcast community. And I had uh, actually back when I was working third shift, which was probably like seven, eight years ago now, um, I actually came across you doing the 22 shots like when you were on being called 10 out of 10 Derek. And like, yeah, I loved those freaking episodes because those episodes got me through very long, lonely nights working like nine to 10 hours by myself. And they were fantastic. And then, yep, been fan of yours ever since and a friend of yours since the beginning and i yeah i am so happy you are able to join us for this today yeah and i know you probably like you didn't even mention godzilla once on this show like i, <laughs> I had a feeling you may leave it out i had a feeling like because i know your love for it but i had a feeling it may be left out yeah because i could i, I was kind of like you at the sense too where i was like which one do i go with you know right like, <laughs> you know? But, you know, maybe we could do like a different version of this episode where we actually could talk about that in a f- format that's more suitable to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there is plenty of options for other top fives that we will be doing as we go forward. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I had fun. And thank you, guys. This is a nice, fun, easy show. And you guys have made me laugh a few times. So that was good stuff. Yeah, hey, that's something <laughs> where we we do very little. So if we can make you laugh, <laughs> that's impressive. So you know where to check out Derek. Please listen to his shows. He's awesome. Uh, Scott and I will be back with one more regular episode on our feed before his hopeful trip out to see me. Well, I think we'll be recording it before I come to visit and it'll be released after I get back. I think. Oh, I think okay. that's how it's going to be. If, if, I, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, you're probably. Scheduling. No, when you. Okay, we'll talk about that off air. Oh, actually, yeah, no, <laughs> no, never mind. Never mind. Yes, it will be out. Actually, it's not like I'm not going to release it. I just don't yes. want to. <laughs> what, what will, I think what will happen is it will be released the day before, a day before Friday. Early. So it'll be on a Thursday night instead. It will be a Thursday nightmare because the Friday <laughs> nightmares are going to be getting in person. Half that, half that. Yeah. So, Derek, thank you again. Uh, we will be back next month with another top five with another fellow podcaster so scotty what do you have to say to the good people in the meantime well until next time on spooky dreams (laughs) bye everyone